Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk sunglasses. There's so much more than just a style accessory, so today I'm going to discuss five things I think you should keep in mind when choosing a pair. One of my favorite ways to accessorize an outfit is to add sunglasses. I feel like they can really change the tone of an entire outfit. They can elevate a casual ensemble, add flair to an otherwise humdrum look, or they can just add an element of cool edginess. But shades are more than just a versatile accessory. They also have the potential to add a layer of protection from environmental stressors like UV light if we choose the right ones. So whether you are about to buy your first pair of sunglasses or you'd like to make a wise decision when adding to your collection of shades, or maybe you're even just trying to decide which pair to, I don't know, take on a trip with you, I'm gonna offer you five things to keep in mind when it comes to choosing the right pair of sunglasses for your needs. As always, I will leave timestamps in the show notes so that you can easily jump to the information that's most relevant for you. Thing number one to keep in mind might be the least related to style but it is, in my opinion, the single most important feature of a good pair of sunglasses by far, and that is UV protection. Sunlight is a constant companion of daytime outdoor activities, so no matter what you plan on doing, whether you're going for a walk or sitting at the playground watching the kids or heading to places like the beach or the mountains, I think the most important aspect to consider is that your lenses have 100% UV protection. Now, this is a style channel. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional, so I am not in any way offering you medical advice here. But I do think that it has since become general knowledge that UV radiation from the sun has been linked to certain health issues, including issues of eye health. For example, short-term overexposure to UV light can cause inflammation in parts of the eye and the surrounding tissues, and long-term cumulative exposure to UV radiation over a period of years has been linked to conditions like cataracts and macular degeneration. So if you're gonna be wearing sunglasses anyway, I figure why not head all those yucky things off at the pass and simply make sure that your glasses are providing sufficient UV protection. Now that we've discussed why UV protection is so important for the eyes, the question becomes, how can you tell if your sunglasses are offering enough UV protection? Well, if you're purchasing them new, sunglasses in shops often have stickers on the glass that say something like 100% UV protection or UV 400 protection. In fact, some glasses even have the UV 400 embossed on the frames themselves. If you see that, you should be a-okay. If you're purchasing from an optometrist, you can of course also ask them. And if you're purchasing your shades online, um, that, that information is normally included right in the listing itself. The great thing nowadays is that these UV 400 lenses are available within a huge price range from $10 shades to fancy schmancy sunglasses that cost like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So you should be able to find sunnies with enough UV protection no matter what your budget and style may be. But what if you're like me and you already own sunglasses? Or what if you purchase them secondhand or get them as a gift? How can you figure out if they have sufficient UV protection then? Well, if you're lucky, you'll be able to tell just by looking at them because it will actually say UV 400 right on the frames themselves. But if it doesn't say that, can you still tell just by looking at them? For example, if the lenses are really dark, is that enough? The answer to that question is no. <laughs> the darkness of the lens tint only indicates how much visible light gets through, but harmful UV rays are not part of the visible light spectrum. They're invisible. They're like little ghosts. So the tint of your lens does not tell you a thing about the UV protection your glasses are offering. In fact, and this is important, Dark sunglasses without UV protection can be more harmful for your eyes than wearing no sunglasses at all. The reasons for this is that we naturally protect our eyes when we encounter bright sunlight by doing things like squinting, and our pupils constrict to let in less light and thus let in less UV radiation. But when we wear dark lenses that only block visible light but don't block UV rays, we no longer feel that need to squint, and our pupils also dilate to let in even more light 
but this also simultaneously lets in more UV radiation. So, since you can't use the tint of the lenses as a measure of their UV protection level, here are some actual ways to figure out exactly how much UV protection your glasses are offering. If you already have your pair of sunglasses, you can check the frames and see if they have that UV 400 embossed on them. Not all of them do, but it is common enough that there's a good chance you can find the answer on the glasses frames themselves. If not, the most reliable way to check their UV level of protection is to take your glasses to your local eye care professional. Most optometrists have equipment to test the UV protection of glasses, and many will perform the service for free. You can also often discover the UV protection level online. This also comes in handy if you find a pair of pre-loved sunglasses on a secondhand app like Poshmark or eBay, and you want to figure out the UV protection level before purchasing them. If you, for example, Google the serial number and model name together with the brand, you can often find listings posted in online shops for the precise model that you either already have or the model that you want. And those listings will often include the UV protection level right there in the product information. Thing number two to keep in mind when choosing the sunglasses you wanna wear is the color of the lens. Black can look elegant or edgy, Brown can be warm and earthy, and who doesn't love wearing rose-colored glasses once in a while, especially when the world is in the state that it's in? But different colored lenses aren't just a style factor. They also have effects on our vision and even on our mood. For example, gray lenses reduce brightness without significantly affecting color vision. The advantage here is that the colors of things like traffic lights remain easy to distinguish. Brown and amber lenses, on the other hand, do alter color perception. So people who struggle with color-related vision deficiencies might want to consider avoiding brown or amber lenses when doing activities like driving, when it's important to see color. On the other hand, though, brown and amber lenses do tend to increase contrast sensitivity and also improve feelings of depth perception. So people who can easily recognize color might actually prefer brown and amber tints when doing things like driving. So the color of your lenses is always a very personal decision. I personally find that pink tinted lenses often help me with indoor situations like fluorescent lighting, but I also enjoy Enjoy wearing pink tinted lenses to the beach. For example, I took these sunglasses with dark pink lenses with me on my recent Croatian beach vacation, and it made everything so much more vivid. I felt like I was living in a fairy tale. And I have also been known to wear blue tinted lenses as a sort of energy boost. Now, I don't know that there is any scientific evidence out there to support this, but I feel like when my energy levels are low, when I wear blue tinted lenses, it just kind of gives me a little bit of an extra energy boost. So, you know, the color of your lenses is just a very personal choice. But tint goes beyond just the color of the lenses, which brings us to thing number three to keep in mind when choosing your sunglasses, and that is the depth of tint. Some glasses have almost no tint at all, while others are amazingly dark. The industry even rates sunglasses according to categories based on the amount of visible light that lenses let through. In fact, many manufacturers actually include the category of lens on the frames themselves. So if you're purchasing glasses online, this information can help give you an idea of how dark the lenses are, even if you can't see them in person. Different manufacturers do define their ranges slightly differently, but they're all usually pretty close, like usually within two to 3% of each other. So the percentages I'm gonna to share today are just kind of for general reference. Category zero lenses have little to no tint, and they tend to let 80 to 100% of the visible light spectrum through. They're essentially clear, so they're mainly used for things like fashion glasses or safety glasses like these, which, as a side note, do happen to be 100% UV protective. So that just goes to show you with a very practical example that the depth of your lens tint really doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the amount of UV protection those lenses are giving you. Category one lenses have a very light tint and let about 45 to 80% of the visible light through. So these are also considered more of fashion glasses than real sunglasses, and they're best suited to 
situations where you don't have a whole lot of sun exposure. So overcast days, that's when I tend to wear these kinds of lenses. Category two lenses are the first ones on this list that are usually considered real sunglasses. They have a medium tint and they provide a medium level of sun glare reduction by reducing the light transmission um, to about 18 to 40% of visible light. Category two lenses, um, they tend to work for most people when conditions are partially sunny. I personally tend to wear category two lenses during the winter or on cloudy days. Category three lenses are most people's go-to tint strength. So when in doubt, category three is probably the best choice for everyday leisure sunglasses. These glasses have a dark tint that tends to let in only about eight to 18% of visible light. And these work great on sunny days. And this is the strength of lens I typically wear when I'm going to the beach or going hiking. Category four lenses are very dark, only transmitting about three to 8% of visible light. So those lenses are pretty extreme and they're meant for the types of very bright conditions that you might find in the mountains or in the desert. So when the sun is extraordinarily strong or there are massive amounts of glare. And it should be noted that category four lenses are not safe for use when driving. I don't personally own any category four lenses, but I do have pretty photosensitive eyes. So part of me has always wanted to try a pair, you know, for science. The last aspect of lenses that I want to talk about today brings us to point number four we should keep in mind when choosing a pair of sunglasses, and that is, do we want our lenses to have any secondary characteristics? For example, would we like them to have something like a gradient, or would we like them to be polarized? Gradient lenses usually flow from a dark tint to a light tint of the same color. Usually the dark tint is on top, the light tint is on the bottom, and that's for obvious reasons. The sun is typically coming at us from above. Unless, of course, you're a contortionist, then, you know, all bets are off. Having a gradient lens can be really advantageous when you're doing things like driving or if you're frequently switching between indoor and outdoor environments. For example, when you're driving, you want to make sure that the lens tint is dark enough to protect you from the sunlight, but you also want to make sure that the sunglasses aren't so dark that they prohibit you from seeing the dashboard. So that's when a gradient lens can be really convenient. Polarization is also a secondary lens feature that can come in really handy when you're in certain situations. For example, if there's a lot of glare, like if you're on the water or in snow, polarized lenses filter light so that only vertically oriented light can pass through the lens and horizontally oriented light is blocked. I used to work as a lifeguard, and when I switched to using polarized lenses, I couldn't believe the difference it made. It cut the glare coming off the water surface so much, and it made it so much easier to see swimmers underwater that it was literally a lifesaver. But there is a con to polarization, and that is when it comes to using digital devices while wearing them. Digital screens tend to have polarized filters on them, so when you're wearing polarized lenses, it can be hard to see your smartphone screen or some navigation systems in cars without either tilting your head or your device to a different angle. And thing number five, the last thing to keep in mind when choosing a pair of sunglasses is the frame shape and size. Now this topic in and of itself is probably enough for a whole entire video series on things like face shape and proportionality and style trends. We're not gonna open that can of worms today because this video is already getting pretty long. Instead, we're gonna talk about the functionality of frames. Let's start with size. The larger the frames, the more protection they're going to offer. So if you're going to the beach where you're going to be exposed to sun from all directions, directly from the sky and indirectly from reflections from the sand and the water, you might want to consider larger frames for some additional protection. And if you want even more protection, you can try frames with a face-formed tilt, which means they wrap around your face, adding additional protection from the sides. Glasses like this are generally great for outdoor sports since they also provide more protection from things like wind or dust or bugs. Have you ever been biking and swallowed a bug? I have. It's not pretty. And to be honest, wraparound frames won't protect you from swallowing insects, but they can protect you from getting a bug in your eye, which is also pretty cool in my book. 
And if you really like the idea of lateral protection, you can also take it to the next level by wearing sunglasses with blinkers or side shields. As someone who suffers from migraines from time to time, I have to say that I am a huge fan of these blinkers because they do a great job at reducing the light that comes into my eyes. But wearer beware. Wearer beware. Have I been talking too long or does that genuinely sound weird? Wearer beware. It kind of reminds me of... Was it 30 Rock where they were they had like a movie called Rural Juror? <laughs> it's like really hard to say. Okay, anyway, let's get back on topic. Wearer beware. These side shields do block your peripheral vision, so you should not wear them while driving or doing any other activity where you need your full range of vision. As you can probably tell from this video, I absolutely love sunglasses as an accessory, as PPE, as tools, as art, but mainly as an element of style. And since you're apparently still watching this video, it seems like you might also be interested in these things. If that is true and you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment since it really helps my channel. And if you enjoy content about style and beauty in general, perhaps you'd like to subscribe to see more videos like this one. Please let me know if you have any questions. And other than that, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. Thank you.